Breaking news. In a major escalation in tensions between the U.S. and Iran, the top Iranian general has been killed in an airstrike while leaving the Baghdad airport. The Pentagon confirmed the U.S. military carried out the attack. Qasem Soleimani was one of the most powerful figures in the Middle East and had been the top military man in Iran for more than 20 years. This attack comes after Iranian-backed groups breached the U.S. embassy in Baghdad just two days ago. We now turn to ABC's Kira Phillips, who's with President Trump in West Palm Beach, Florida. Kira. When reports of the airstrike at the Baghdad airport broke tonight, there was one question on everyone's mind. Was the United States responsible? Well, the president was cryptic. He responded with only a picture, tweeting out the image of the American flag. My White House sources were able to confirm that not only did the strike happen, but it was ordered by President Trump, the Pentagon announcing that the strike did indeed kill the powerful commander of Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps, Qasem Soleimani, as well as the head of an Iranian-backed Iraqi militia. And it was ordered by President Trump. Now, here in the U.S., Republicans are calling this a success, saying Trump made a brave and correct call, but the president is also facing questions from his critics on Capitol Hill, asking if the United States carried out the assassination without authorization from Congress, potentially bringing this country to the brink of an all-out war. Kira, thanks. Joining us now is ABC News Chief Global Affairs Correspondent Martha Raddis. Now, Martha, you were on the ground in, in Iraq with Soleimani not too long ago. What was his presence like there? Well, when, uh, when ISIS was taking over towns in Iraq, Soleimani would often be seen in Iraq, traveling back and forth between Iran and Iraq to, to help lead the fight, these Iranian-backed militias against ISIS. He was a very strong but very mysterious presence in Iraq. He was not high-profile by any means, but people certainly knew he was there and certainly knew what he was doing in trying to defeat ISIS. But I will also say that his presence was felt throughout the war there because he was responsible for the death of many Americans. And I heard soldiers and generals and everyone talk about that and what the Iranians had done and the Iranian weapons uh, that were present in Iraq and targeting American troops. So clearly this is a victory tonight then for the Trump administration. But I would imagine that Iran will have a, a response, yes? I think it's almost certain Iran will have some sort of response, uh, even given what we've heard from them this evening in tweets, uh, and that the United States in some way will pay for this. Uh, I think the important thing here to look at in any kind of Iranian response is whether they take credit for it. Remember with the attacks uh, earlier this year on the Saudi oil fields and uh, the, the, the drone attacks, they talked about the drone, but they did not talk about the Saudi oil fields. They did not take responsibility for those attacks. In fact, the foreign minister uh, of Iran told me in person when I was in Tehran uh, that some of those must have been photoshopped, that they weren't responsible for those things. So I think if Iran has some sort of response to the killing of Soleimani and they take credit for it, uh, they are looking for a larger conflict. If they don't, I think they want to tamp this down. Arthur Rattis, thank you so much. Joining us now is ABC News military contributor Colonel Steve Ganyard. He's a former Marine and high-ranking State Department official. Steve, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. First, what, what's the latest? What's the information you have at this hour? We know everything that, uh, that is out in the public, and that is that the Soleimani is dead, along with the head of this, uh, of this militia group that, uh, that, Iran, uh, that Iran controlled. And so uh, that is the headline. That's not going to change uh, overnight. What may change overnight is how the Iranians react. Uh, obviously, this is something that, uh, that they'll have to do something about. Uh, Mr. Soleimani is, uh, he is not just a general, he is something, almost a demigod uh, within the eyes of the Iranian people. He has um, been a hero of the Iranian people for a long time. He is their face uh, overseas in their international adventures. Uh, and so this is not just some general, this is somebody who is not only one of the most powerful men in Iran, but one of the most powerful men in all of the Middle East. So it seems you would suggest that Iran will almost certainly have to respond. They're going to have to do something. I think that, that what they do and how much they do is up to them. The, the administration did two things that were very interesting uh, today. One is that they said, we will hold Iran 
responsible for anything that happens. That means no surrogates, no Hezbollah, no uh, tankers in the Gulf just mysteriously blowing up, no global hawks being shot down. Anything that happens, Iran will be held responsible by the U.S. So they no longer have the ability to hide behind their proxies, to hide behind their surrogates. So uh, what they do will be up to them, but they know that if they get held responsible, uh, that the U.S. very quickly could defeat their, their conventional military and leave them helpless. That's that's the real risk here, is that it gets, turns into something that, that becomes a very uh, uh, dangerous conventional fight within the Persian Gulf. Based on what you just said, how mm -hmm. likely is it at this point that more U.S. troops will be sent to the region? Uh, I think the, the posture that we have there is quite strong. Uh, it's certainly enough to deal with anything that the uh, Iranian military could throw at the U.S. Uh, it just depends on what kind of response comes from it. If the Iranians decide to do something quiet, to hit back just to show that they did, uh, then it'll be probably something that the troops there will be able to handle. The real danger here is does it get out of hand? Do the Iranians respond, try to deflect uh, the anger that is inherent in the Iranian people towards the Iranian regime? As you know, that there have been riots over the past uh, few months. Thousands of Iranians have been killed by Iranian security forces in these riots. And so the Iranian regime wants to deflect that anger onto the U.S. So that is sort of going to be part of the calculus on how hard they hit back at the U.S. Colonel Steve Ganyer, thank you so much. The attack tonight killing the top general in Iran is just the latest in a troubled relationship between the U.S. and Iran, one that's been ongoing for 40 years since the regime took American hostages. But last summer, tensions began to increase once again. The U.S. calling the strike a success. For the Iranians, almost surely a call for retaliation. Iranian television announcing his death, saying Soleimani had been martyred after years of struggle for Islam. The Department of Defense confirming the attack, saying it was done, quote, at the direction of the president, adding this strike was aimed at deterring future Iranian attack plans. The attack came after continuing tension between the U.S. and Iran. In 2018, President Trump pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal brokered by President Obama. This was a horrible one-sided deal. Just days ago on New Year's Eve. Do I want to? No. I want to have peace. I like peace. And Iran should want peace more than anybody. So I don't see that happening. In April, the U.S. State Department made the unprecedented step of labeling the Iranian National Guard a terrorist organization. This historic step will divide the world's leading state sponsor of terror, the financial means to spread misery and death around the world. By early May, the U.S. aircraft carrier had been deployed to the region. Then, a shocking escalation, a series of attacks on international oil tankers in the region's busy shipping channels. Smoke billowed hundreds of feet high from one of the crippled oil tankers. A tit for tat all leading up to a June 2019 attack on a U.S. drone. The Pentagon claims it was flying in the international airspace, but Iran maintains the drone was in their territory. The Pentagon readies an airstrike only to see a stunning reverse in course around 7 p.m. The U.S. military ready to launch warplanes and warships at Iranian targets until one final meeting between the president and members of his national security team, where Trump made a dramatic reversal against the advice sources say of former national security advisor John Bolton and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. But he later told NBC News he changed his mind because the planned strikes were not proportionate to Iran's downing of an unmanned U.S. drone. I thought about it for a second. And I said, you know what? They shot down an unmanned uh, drone, and here we are sitting with 150 dead people uh, that would have taken place probably within a half an hour after I said go ahead. Yeah. The president denying reports that planes were in the air and ships were in positions before he called off that strike. But that was not the case tonight. Tonight, the strike went off. We'll have continuing coverage on Good Morning America. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.